triumph seen. Praise the Lord, our mighty warrior. Praise the Lord, the glorious one. By his hand we stand in victory, and by his name we overcome. Though the storms of hell pursue, in darkest night we worship you. today at Twickenham. If you're a guest, welcome. I'll have something to say about that in just a minute, but we wanted to do something right off the bat. We have Ethan and Jessica Darby with us this morning, and they have a Christmas present for the church. So, <laughs> this is, uh, or is it JT or Jet? Yes. <laughs> yes. His name is Jet. His name Thomas. is Jet. All right. Oh Jet. Thomas. All right. So, uh, this is Bill Bass, one of our shepherds. This is Amy. She's our children's minister, and this is our newest member, and he is gorgeous, and he's smiling, and he doesn't sleep at night. <laughs> our uh, tradition is we, we welcome a baby, and we always have a prayer first thing when they're on their first Sunday, and so that's how we're going to start today. Bill Bass, one of our shepherds, he's going to lead us. Let's pray. God, at this time of, of celebration of birth of our Savior, we thank you now for the celebration of this birth within this family here. God, we pray for Ethan and Jessica as they uh, raise this child. God, we know that there will be times of struggle and uh, times of challenge, but God, there will also be times of great joy and blessing. And we ask you to, to be with them through the struggles and to magnify the blessings. God, I pray that we as a congregation will be here to support them and their family. Uh, and support JT as he grows and uh, God we just ask your blessings upon each of them and upon all of us as we work together to serve you in Jesus name amen yeah let's give him a hand that's all right what a great way to start today okay so if you're a guest welcome thanks for coming out to be with us today and uh, we're just really honored that you are ch choosing to be here with us we're, we're grateful for that there's a card on the seat in front of you, and you can uh, pull that out and write down any uh, information that uh, it's okay for us to have. If you have any prayer requests, indicate that on the card, and you can put those in the collection plate when it passes. 
really, really soon. So I'd get on that if I were you. If you got anything you want to go in there, uh, go ahead and get that ready because our collection is going to be the very next thing that we do. In fact, why don't you guys, are you guys coming up? Come on up. I want to welcome a couple of new members here this morning, uh, several of them. And first, Adam Sampley and Jennifer Paulson. Can you guys kind of stand up and let's say hello to you? Welcome. Glad to have you guys. They are engaged and about, uh, they're going to get married uh, next year, so we're excited about that. And then we've got Audrey Schubert and Sarah Schubert, and you guys are kind of down in this. There we go, right there. Welcome, guys. Glad to have you guys. Thanks for coming. Glad you're here. So this morning, um, you'll, you'll hear this in the songs that we sing. One of the, one of the things that comes up in, throughout all of the, the, the narratives in Scripture about the birth of Jesus is there's always this one special presence, right? It's always, there's always an angel in there. So listen for that as we, as we sing the songs and go through our service this morning. And we're just really glad you're here. Merry Christmas to you. Thanks for coming out. It's going to be a great day for us. Let's stand. We're going to sing together. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains. And the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have become your father. Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. In speaking of the angels, he says, He makes his angels spirits and his servants flames of fire. But about the sun, he says, Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. To which of the angels did God ever say, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Praise the Lord, ye heavens all adore him. Praise him, angels in the high. Son and the rejoice before him. Before him. Praise him, all ye stars of Salvation. 
salvation, hosts on high his power proclaim. Heaven, earth, and all creation, Lord, and magnify his name. Hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen.
decorating their streets and their sidewalks. It's a story of trees and ornaments and fireplaces, of gifts and wrapping paper and ribbons. There's expectation and wonder and hope, a deep hope that drives us back to the beginning of the story. Because it all starts here. It starts in a manger with a baby, and an angel, and a scared teenage girl in love with a misunderstood young man who thinks she's worth it. It's about a child who will bring light into darkness, joy into despair, revealing a God who will redeem it all. A God who is leaving the glory of heaven to pursue the glory of a cross. A God who is becoming flesh and blood and skin, a God who is loving and offering all people a pathway back into the relationship for which they were created. It's too rich to comprehend and too beautiful to dismiss. This is Christmas. This is the story of stories. And it all starts here. Dear God, it is too beautiful to comprehend what you have done for us. The story is unimaginable. And you see our hearts in these moments, God, as we sit here with our story. And we, we come to, to celebrate the life of your son in the supper in, these, in this moment, in this time. And we feel so disconnected from this story. As these, uh, this bread is about to be circulated <clears throat> in the aisles and passed among us, dear God, remind us that this story, your son, is present among us, that he moves among us even today in these moments as this bread passes in symbolic form of his body. His body is here. And help us in our story as we take this bread into our bodies to digest this story in our own lives and help us to reflect, dear God, on your deep and abiding love for us and for Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.
Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. God, surely you are here. Surely your Son is here, your Holy Spirit. Even, even as real as when your son passed these, these elements, these, these, um, this cup, the very first time. Remind us in our presence today, however, his hands are wounded and his side is wounded. And we put those wounds there. He absorbed into his life our broken, fractured, uh, confused, disoriented life. He took on our mistakes and became for us our sacrifice. So as we consume this cup, Father, help us to become and know in that in his death we become what he became thanks to his his love and his death in Jesus name amen Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory. Surely 
It came upon the midnight clear, that glorious song of old. From angels bending near the earth to touch their hearts of gold. Peace on the earth, goodwill to men, from hands of gracious King. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Still through the cold and skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled. And still their heavenly music floats o'er all the weary world. Above its sad and lowly place they bend on hovering wings. And ever o'er its battle sounds the blessed angels sing. For lo, the days are hastening on by prophecy of old. When with the ever circling years shall come the time foretold. When the whole heaven and earth shall own the Prince of Peace their King. And the whole world send back the song which now the be seated. So this morning as we began um, was preparing, I realized that I really wanted to open up with a, a fairly long scripture reading. And then I thought it would be better if I shared that. And so I've asked some folks to help me with that. Uh, Kevin Malone will be our first reader. Kevin is a friend. He is a, pardon me? Kelvin. Kelvin. I said Kelvin. Kelvin, yeah, it's like Kelv Kelvlar. Kelvin is a, a great dad and a great husband, and uh, we're blessed to have him at our church. Shay McGriff is um, a senior here at Twickenham, and Shay is strong and capable and is going to do awesome things. Gary Wicks is one of our treasures at Twickenham. Uh, he was so welcoming to Lisa and me, as were so many of you. Gary actually took us on a tour of uh, uh, NASA uh, over there so that we could uh, meet all the people that uh, he knew and learn all the things that he knows, but we didn't learn them all, but he's a blessing. <laughs> and then Jamie Elkins, uh, when I think of gentlemen, Jamie comes to mind because he is that. He is a gentleman, he's a good guy, and he'll be one of our readers as well. Kelvin, get us started. For what it's worth, my first name is John, by the way. <laughs> I don't know what he said, but I'm <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> um, all right, so I'll begin our portion of this reading from Matthew 1, um, verses 18 to 25. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she, found, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is, in, what is, in, what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give <clears throat> she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. From Luke, 
first chapter, verse 5 through 15a. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by Lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. Luke 1, 26 through 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel... Me to do it? The angel. The angel went to her and said, time. "Greetings to you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you." Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, "Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son." And you were to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be the son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of, the throne of his father David and will reign over Jacob's descendants forever and his kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on to you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. She who is unable to, she who is said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, "May your word to me be fulfilled." Then the angel left her. I will be reading Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 15. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared in the angel pra- with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one- to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Hey, let's give these guys a hand, please. Thank you. Shay, sweetie, let me tell you something. The way you read that, 
is probably exactly how things were for Mary when she received that news. They were absolutely ter- she was absolutely terrified. And we always just kind of blow through that and think, wow, that was pretty cool. Mary must have been really excited. Yeah, I bet Mary couldn't get her words out. So thank you. That was a blessing. I think for a lot of us, the characters in these passages are as familiar as family. I mean, we've heard their stories every Christmas since we were old enough to sit still for five minutes. Uh, Joseph, the quiet carpenter, uh, known for his stoic obedience and never speaking one word, at least not one that's recorded in Scripture. Zechariah, the old priest, who received news so good he couldn't believe it. Uh, Mary, the young woman chosen to bear the Son of God. And the shepherds, blue-collar workers, not that different from the men working the road construction project a couple of hundred yards west of where we're sitting right now, over on Memorial Parkway. But the, the characters that I think that we probably overlook when we hear these stories, it's not Jesus, because we, we're pretty good at focusing on him, it's the angels, which is odd, because angels are really very popular. I mean, they show up in songs uh, by everyone from U2 to Aerosmith to Elvis to Mariah Carey to Martina McBride to Beyonce, even Chance the Rapper, although I don't recommend his music. Let me say that again, although I don't recommend his music, okay? Uh, They are angels of significant characters in movies. City of Angels, Constantine, Legion. Uh, Of course, It's a Wonderful Life in Bill and Ted's Bogus Adventure, which I know a lot of you guys have seen. Television shows, Preacher, uh, Supernatural, Promised Land, all feature angels. They're very popular. The really interesting thing, though, is when you begin to talk to people about angels, you start hearing stories, sometimes chilling stories about inexplicable events involving benevolent strangers who seem to appear at crisis moments with goodwill and practical help. People tell you these stories, and then they shrug their shoulders and they say something like, Who knows? Now, I need to add right here that if you don't have a chill bump inducing angel story, neither do I, okay? So don't feel bad. I think sometimes we hear those stories and we get kind of spiritually intimidated because, you know, I'm a loser. I don't have an angel story. So just because you haven't had one doesn't really mean anything. In fact, Hebrews chapter 13 verse 2 says that Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. In other words, you may have an angel story, you just don't know it. Mysterious? You bet. But mystery is something I think we could use a little more of. So I just want to walk around in the odd world of the Bible with you for a couple of minutes to see what we can learn about angels, since they were such important pieces of the Jesus story. First thing that I think we're going to discover, and this will be a little bit disappointing, is that we have a lot of misconceptions. For example, most people think it would be the coolest thing in the world if they had a personal angelic encounter. And I I understand that because Hollywood typically depicts angels as these insanely attractive creatures who are always pleasant to be around and you just feel so much better when you're with them. The truth is, apparently they were terrifying, uh, which is why the first thing that angels usually say is, do not be afraid. Uh, A few weeks ago, we finished a series in Daniel, and he was as courageous and fearless as they come. But I want you to listen to what he said or, or how he described an encounter with one of these heavenly messengers. This is Daniel chapter 10, verses 4 through 6. On the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the the bank of the great river, the Tigris, I looked up and there before me was a man dressed in linen with a belt of fine gold from Euphaz around his waist. His body was like topaz, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, 
His arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and his voice was like the sound of a multitude. If I saw that, I would not consider that a pleasant encounter. In verse 11, Daniel says that that when this creature spoke, Daniel says, I trembled. Similar experiences happened to Zechariah and Luke, John and Revelation, the shepherds who received the good news of Jesus' birth, and to virtually everybody who encountered an angel. You you remember the great reformer Martin Luther. We just celebrated the 500 500 500-year anniversary of uh, the Reformation. Martin Luther used to pray that he would not have an angelic encounter because he knew that it would be absolutely terrifying. So if you're longing for a close encounter, you might want to rethink that. Here's a second misconception, and this one, um, this one may rub you the wrong way a little bit. Many of us harbor the hope that we or people that we love will become angels when we or they die, that we kind of earn our wings, so to speak. That's a compelling thought, but the Bible never says that angels are humans who have been promoted. In Matthew 22, Jesus said that we would be like angels in the resurrection, but he did not say that we would become angels. Paul told the Corinthians that we will judge the angels, and I will tell you I have no idea what that means but it seems to preclude our becoming angels. But that, that hope runs really strong in us. James Agee, an author, once described a human being as a furious angel nailed to the ground by his wings. Philip Yancey, whom many of you have read, another author, wrote about his own angel envy. He said, I envy angels because they never get cancer, they never lose their jobs, they, they don't go hungry, they, they never having fallen, they have no need of redemption. Um, And then he he says, in contrast, humans seem frail and vulnerable. Being human is hazardous to your health. We'd just as soon be angels. Thank you. The body strikes us as a kind of prison. I get that. It's a very attractive thought, but I really can't encourage you in that. The truth is, the Bible suggests that angels may actually envy you and me. Peter wrote that they longed to look into the wonderful mysteries of the gospel to which you and I have full access. Besides, we're destined to become something better than angels. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. We've been studying 1 John in our Sunday morning Sunday school classes. Dear friends, now we are the children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known, but we know that when he appears, when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. I want to be like Jesus, not the angels. That's better. What do angels do? Well, it appears that their first and highest calling is to praise God. A moment ago, we sang a song based on Psalm 148, praise him, all his angels, praise him, all his heavenly hosts. And in Revelation chapter 5, John describes An incredible scene. Beginning in verse 11, he says, I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders in a loud voice. They were saying, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and power. So angels praise God and praise the lamb. But praise isn't all that angels do in the Bible. The word angel itself simply means messenger. They were messengers of good news to Zechariah, to Joseph, to Mary, to the shepherds. After the resurrection of Jesus, they brought news of his victory over death to the women who visited the tomb. The angel told the disciples that Jesus would come again. The one thing angels never do, however is communicate a message that contradicts God's written word. If they do, Galatians chapter 1, verse 8, Paul said, consider them cursed. In Scripture, angels also provide protection. Uh, Earlier, we talked about Daniel's frightful encounter with an angel, but it was an angel who saved him from the lions when he was in the lion's den. And Jesus himself apparently believed in guardian angels. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 10, he said, 
See that you do not despise one of these little ones, children, for I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14 says that angels are ministering servants sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. That's us. That's you and me. Angels are ministering servants sent to serve us, to take care of us. That may be one of the most comforting things we could think. God has created these wonderful, benevolent creatures who are charged with watching over his children. It's good to know that we are not alone. Speaking of comfort, that's another thing that the angels do. When Jesus was in the wilderness wrestling with temptation, Mark says the angels came and ministered to him. In the garden before his crucifixion, again, they came and strengthened him. And he told his disciples when they entertained the thought of defending him with violence, Jesus said, look, do you think I, I couldn't call on my father? And he would at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels. Jesus didn't think he was alone either, even in that dark hour. I like Luke 15. Remember those stories about the prodigal son and the woman who lost the coin and the lost sheep? That seems to suggest that the angels watch in eager anticipation the fate of people who wrestle with sin. And when we repent and turn away from that sin and turn back to God, the heavens, the angels fill the heavens with joyful celebration. They, they celebrate. They high-five one another. They Kind of like football players who score a touchdown. They run and slam each, into each other in the end zone when we score one of those spiritual kind of touchdowns. They're some of those fascinating creatures in existence. They really are out there or in here, maybe all around us. And we, we could become overly fascinated with them. But did you know that nowhere in Scripture does it say anything about how God feels about the angels? They, they are ever in his presence. They are always at his bidding. They celebrate and praise him constantly. But there isn't one word about how God feels about them. There is, though, more than a clue about how God feels about you and me. Paul put it this way, Romans chapter 8. I'm convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God loves us. That's what the coming of Christ into the world was really all about. We can envy angels if we like, I suppose. But why in the world would we? God gave his greatest treasure to make us more than heavenly messengers. God gave his only son to make us his very own children. Maybe that's the most important thing you could hear today. When God set about his eternal mission to save us from sin and death, he did not send an angel. He came himself in the person of Jesus in the form of a human baby. And that's pretty special. That is mysterious. And that means that God loves you and me. That's what this season is about. Embrace that. Live it. Believe it. Maybe more than anything, share it. Because we live in a world that needs more than angels. We live in a world that needs Jesus. Let's pass it on. Let's stand. Let's sing together. See him in a manger lay, whom the choirs of angels praise. Mary, Joseph, let your reign, while our hearts in love we raise.
announcements here before we, we break up this morning and some family news. First of all, you will notice uh, out in this lobby and in this lobby and maybe downstairs too, there are some little cards that have little bears on them. Those are for uh, pr uh, an organization called Child Haven. That's a children's home. And by taking one of those cards, you can make sure that child has a Christmas. We have a bunch of these left. It would be really good if in about 20 minutes we didn't have any of those cards left. So if you could pick one of those up, instructions on what to do are on the cards. Pick one of those up today to make sure those, those children at Child Haven have a, a happy Christmas. We are blessed. Let's be sure we pass that along as well. Next Sunday morning, we will not have our regular Sunday school classes. We will meet here, though, at 9 o'clock for coffee and donuts and other things that are appropriate to eat during the holidays. And we can just fellowship with one another. Then at 10 o'clock, we'll have our regular worship service. This Wednesday night, last, we, we, did, we started this last, last Wednesday. We had a great night of, called Dessert in Devo. And we meet in here at 6.30, 6.30 for a time of worship. It's our, our instrumental service and a time of teaching. We're going through kind of a devotional thought called An Unexpected Christmas, where we're finding the story of Jesus in places, nooks and crannies of the Bible. You'd never imagine to find it, and yet it's there. Had a great time last Wednesday night. A bunch of us were here. You join us this Wednesday night. And then when we're done up here, we go downstairs, and we eat more things that are appropriate to eat for the holidays. <laughs> it's just all good. Lots of other news is in the bulletin. You be sure and take a look at that and so that you don't miss out on any of the great stuff that's happening. This is a great season of the year to invite people to come and be with you in worship. If you ask, they may in fact come, and they may hear a story they've never heard before. Let's close with a prayer. God, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for coming, not for sending a messenger. As awesome and glorious as they are, thank you for coming yourself in the person of Jesus. And thank you for living within us in your Holy Spirit. You are an awesome and amazing God, and we are blown away by the thought that you would not just personally come to live among us, but that you would personally come to live within us. Oh, what a blessing. May we be that blessing as we make our way through this week. May we be people of comfort, people who protect, people who project the message that you have given us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have a great week.